Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up Mac Mail for checking emails that you've set up in Plesk 12. So we're not going to go through every single aspect of the Mac Mail app, but I'm assuming you've watched the previous video in which you've set up an email address for you in Plesk 12, and this video is the accompaniment to that with which we can check those emails from Mac Mail as an external client. Every email client requires quite a few things and they are complex and they're specific to every email server that you have and uh, some can be auto discovered uh, by the Mac Mail app but sadly Plesk cannot because it's not a standard client and in this case uh, these are the details that you will need. An incoming mail server URL that is usually something like yourdomain.com or it's mail.yourdomain.com or maybe something specific that you've set up or that your uh, service provider has given you. If you're checking emails on a secure port, which we highly recommend, then you should give the Mac Mail app the SSL port 993. Sometimes the wrong port is discovered. Other ports may work, but 993, I've checked on my service, they definitely do work. There are also varying types of authentication for this SSL communication, and we need the authentication type password. This is all going to become clear when I show you this in the video. The outgoing mail server needs pretty much the same details. It needs a URL, which is also yourdomain.com or mail.yourdomain.com. And again, it needs a different SSL port to communicate if you want to send emails securely. Again, we're using the authentication type of password and the SSL port that we need in this case for the outgoing mail server, that's port 587. Of course, you'll also need a username, which is the full email address that you've set up. So if your domain would be domain.com and your username is Steve, then your username to check email will be steve at domain.com. And you also need the password that you've given Plesk that you've either generated or typed in. And you also need to tell MacMail how you're going to communicate with the server. There's two protocols that are supported. One is IMAP and one is POP. POP I do not recommend. In fact, you know, no one should be using POP in this day and age because we all have multiple devices. POP doesn't save what you've done with your email messages. It only syncs with the server once and that is it. Whereas IMAP, the preferred method, actually stores what you're doing to your email on the server. So if you mark something as red, that is stored as red on the server. Therefore, if you pick up another device like your iPhone or your Outlook email client or any other email client, all those clients will know that you've read that mail. Likewise, if you store all your sent mail and all your drafts and all those things and all your folders on the IMAP email server, then all your devices will know about these folders. So IMAP, highly recommended. Don't use POP if you can avoid it. Avoid it like the plague. And then the other, the final thing that we need is an IMAP folder prefix. And in our case, that is inbox in all capitals. This just tells the server where all these folders that we just talked about are stored. So in our case, they're all going to be stored in something called inbox with all capital letters. Great, let's go over to our email client to Mac Mail, and I'll show you how to do this on Mac OS X Mavericks. I already have a single email account installed in my Mac Mail thing, which is my iCloud account. I don't use it much, but you know, something's here already. Now I want to add my Plesk account that I've just set up. So I go over to Mail and Accounts. That'll bring up this window here, and it allows me to add another what Mac OS X Mavericks knows as an internet account. Uh, I'm going to add another account, and I can choose what I'm doing here. So I want to add a mail account. Hit create and MacMail will ask you for some initial details. It'll ask you all those details and you can configure them all later too. So that's my name, that's cool. The email address I've set up is this. A file transcoder is a test domain I have and here's my super secret password. MacMail is trying to discover the settings so on services like Yahoo and Gmail this works, but on Plesk this doesn't work. So we need to configure this account manually. No problem, hit next. And here's that account type that I've showed you before. You can choose IMAP and you can choose POP. IMAP is pre-selected and please stick with that. The mail server, this is now the incoming mail server, is just your domain, unless you've been given something else by your hosting provider. Username and password are already preset here. The username, however, needs to be your email address at your domain. Hit next and MacMail is trying to connect. This certificate warning here, that happens if your domain 
doesn't have an SSL certificate installed. It's not a massive problem. The data is still encrypted that you sent between the server, but a third party company doesn't vouch for you. If you click connect, this warning will be ignored once, but on subsequent launches, this warning will always come up again. So what you can do is click show certificate and just tick that little box here. Always trust Parallels panel when connecting to this domain. I'm gonna to choose to do this and then that should go away at least for the outgoing mail server. To confirm that, I need to type in my computer's password so that that can be added to the keychain access. That was the incoming mail server sorted. Now we have the outgoing mail server. So that's the thing that sends mail out from your computer to the server. Again, server URL here is the same as your domain and your username, just like before, and the password. Hit create, and that's that done. Now you get that certificate warning again, so you can close this window down. And you may be wondering, well, what's happening here? I've literally just added that to Keychain Access. Why am I being asked again? Because it's now for the outgoing mail server. So you have to do the same thing again. Show certificate, tick that box, always trust. And trust me, you're never going to be bothered by those things again. Nothing much appears to have changed here. So now let's open that little um, triangle here. MacMail takes a second to synchronize mails. If you open the inbox up, you see that you now have two email accounts in your inbox. One is this one, that was the old one, and one is the new one. Looks like I don't have any mail. Maybe I need to send myself some. If you want to change the name that MacMail has given you automatically here, just click on that mailbox and click with two fingers or right click, whatever you want to call it, and head over to edit testing at filetranscoder.com. And then you're back in this window. And what you're seeing here in that field is the description. So you can change that to anything you like. And now it's called test account. Do you remember what I said about SSL ports earlier? The ones that are used so that your email client can communicate securely with the Plesk server? Well, MacMail usually picks the wrong one, so we need to tweak them. Let's uh, click on that test account here and hit edit. And over here, head over to the advanced tab. And here's what's happened. So the IMAP path prefix is inbox. MacMail has picked that correctly. And previous versions of MacMail, the port was asked when you set up an email account, but that doesn't happen anymore. So there's two things wrong here. The port number, as I said, should be 993. Use SSL is good. If you untick this box, then you're not communicating securely. So I would strongly recommend you switch that on or leave that ticked rather. But the authentication method is wrong. There are several ways of shaking hands between your machine and the Plex server. And in our case, we really want the password rather than the MD5 challenge or any of the other ones here. Password should work fine. And that was one thing. That was the incoming mail server. Let's configure while we're here the outgoing mail server because that also needs to be tweaked. Head over to account information. And on the bottom here, you'll find usually a drop down menu of outgoing mail servers. Have a look. Head over and edit the SMTP server list and pick the one in question, which is this one here test account. That's ours. You can even give it a description. Head over to advanced and choose a custom port which in our case is 587. Authentication on the bottom here, leave that tick box checked to use SSL, and an authentication on the bottom here, again, pick password. Give it your username and password, just like before, whatever your email username and password is. Hit OK and close that window. And now MacMail is ready to rock. Let me send myself a quick test mail here from my iCloud account to my test account. Let's see if it arrives. There we go. One way around it worked from iCloud to my test account it worked. Let's see if we can respond. Sending was successful and if I go back into my iCloud account, I'm getting that response. So we're all good here. That's fantastic. Something important to keep in mind about folders that are stored on your IMAP server. MacMail calls them mailboxes. It's a bit of a confusing term and misleading term because they're not really mailboxes as in new email accounts. They're just folders on an existing email account. 
take this one on the bottom here, on the test account. I currently have one folder which is called spam, but I can create other folders here by going up to mailbox and say create mailbox. This doesn't create a new email account or anything, it just creates a folder either inside a folder or in our test account here. And after a second, the test folder appears here. I can now go ahead and move a message that I have here, for example, from my uh, test account, the, this email that I've sent earlier, I can click on that and just move it over to the test folder. Then it goes away from the send folder and is copied into the test folder. Likewise, if I want to file it somewhere else, I can just go and pick it up and drag it anywhere I want. And that's how the email is copied, that one single email. Mailboxes can be quite powerful. For example, if I have a folder already like this one, the spam folder, that I would like to be recognized as the junk mail folder, then I can do that. I can go over to pick the folder in question and go over to mailbox. And down here I can say use this mailbox as. So you see where I'm going with this. You can store all your sent or trash or archived or drafts on the IMAP server if you map the folders correctly. So in this case I'd like my spam folder to be used as the junk mailbox. And therefore anything that MacMail recognizes as junk will be copied into the spam folder automatically. This is important to keep in mind because that's how Pless determines what you recognize as spam and what isn't. So if I do that, then you see that spam folder disappears from here and I have a new folder up here which is called junk, which is currently it's empty, it's a good thing. But uh, this folder that MacMail now knows as junk, in the background, the spam folder on my IMAP server is going to be used. Likewise, you can also map sent messages and drafts just the same way and trash, of course. I hope this gentle introduction to how you check your email was helpful. Don't forget to watch all the other videos in this series and subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on Plesk and web hosting and all kinds of other interesting stuff. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.